Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland, everybody. Welcome back to Fallout 3, where today we're going to be going over the top 10 best weapons in Fallout 3. This is including every type of weapon. We've already done some of these for like the best rifles, best pistols, best big guns. So if you would like to see those individually, I'd recommend them, especially if you're going with a themed build, like you're going to go melee only. That's probably going to be more relevant than this one. But this is just my opinion of the top 10 best weapons in Fallout 3. So coming in our number 10 spot, we have our one and only explosive weapon that's going to be showing up on this list. And that is the bottle cap mines. The bottle cap mines are probably the best explosive in the game. You can find them pretty early on. You can find them on workbenches, which is really good. They do really high damage. They're one of the best explosives to be making. Well, it's pretty much just this one and the Nuka grenade, but the Nuka grenade requires quantums. Quantums are kind of limited unless you get Nuka Chemist, as well as you do need them for Sierra's Quest too. So that can be kind of a pain to get them. They're also just not as common to find on workbenches as the bottle cap mines. Bottle cap mines are just super useful on any build, even if you're not building towards explosives, because at least you can lay them down and have enemies run over the top of them. They can still chunk death claws, they can still kill Yaogwais, they can still do really high damage to other enemies too. So they are a very solid explosive and probably the best explosive in the game. Coming in at our number nine spot, we've got Lincoln's Repeater. This is probably one of the best rifles in the game, at least ballistic rifles. This one does high damage. You can get it extremely early on, which definitely helps. It does take the 44 round, which is one of the more rare rounds to find but into the late game, you should be able to buy a decent amount or make more if you're going to the pit. Lincoln's Repeater is just very solid all the way around, and the simple fact that you're probably going to run into it during the main quest because it's right across the street from the Museum of Technology. It's really easy to run right over there. You could even just ignore the ghouls in the area, run right to Lincoln's Repeater and grab this, and you could also collect the other Lincoln items there too, which certainly helps. This weapon is just very solid all the way around. Coming in at our number three spot, we have the A321 Unique Plasma Rifle. This is another weapon that you can rush right away, and this weapon pretty much just has above average stats in everything. It has an extremely common around with the microfusion cells. Plasma rifles are really easy to find towards the mid and late game when the Enclave start showing up, so fixing this up isn't that big of a deal. This has really good item health, it has good damage, it has good damage per second, it's got good range, it's got really good everything, and the simple fact that you can run right down to Rivet City and get this really early on it just makes this thing so much better. Funny enough, you can actually get both this and the other reward from this quest, from doing the Replicated Man. You just have to side with Harkness first, get the Plasma Rifle, then go talk to Zimmerman, side with him, then you can kill Zimmerman and his, uh, his synth. Once you kill them, then you'll also get the Wired Reflexes perk, so you get an additional bonus at the start, which is better uh, action point cost. And this weapon's already really good in a VATS build, and VATS is very strong in Fallout 3. So if you want to do that, you start out with probably one of the strongest starts in the game. It, it is really, really good. Coming in at number 7, we have probably the best melee weapon in the game with the Shish Kebab. I feel like you could argue both the Shish Kebab and something like the Mauler or the Man Opener to be the best melee weapon in the game. And I think the Mauler and the Man Opener are better if you don't have the Pyromaniac perk. But assuming you do, the shish kebab hits really hard. It's also a more common weapon since those weapons are only found in the pit, so you're going to have to go back there to get more steel saws or auto axes to fix them up. The shish kebab you can just make, and it doesn't really require anything that's very difficult to find. You just need the motorcycle gas tank, handbrake, lawnmower blade, oh, and the pilot light, and most of those are pretty common things. So long as you have the schematic, you can make this at any workbench. It does good damage, it does good damage per second, and again, if you have the pyromaniac perk, 50% more damage is a huge buff. This also has a 2 times crit modifier, which is really good, especially if you plan on taking Ninja, which you probably should if you're going with a melee or an unarmed build. It's just a very solid weapon all the way around. It works really well against pretty much everything that you would want it to. I guess the only kind of downside to this weapon is that you'll know if there's gas in the room by just wandering over there with the shish kebab out because it will light on fire. And speaking of fire weapons, coming in at our number six spot, we have the heavy incinerator. This is one of the best big guns in the game. This one is found in the Broken Steel DLC, and you're going to have to be taking this off of Enclave Hellfire troops, which they are pretty much the toughest troop in the game at least from the Enclave side. They may not be the strongest enemy in the game. I think something like Super Mutant Overlords or the Ghoul Reavers or the Albino Rad Scorpions are probably stronger than them, but these guys are still pretty tanky. They have one of the best power armors in the game and they have one of the best weapons in the game. It does good damage per second as well as damage over time because it can light things on fire. It's really good at close and medium range. It's also pretty decent at long range. 
if you get used to lobbing these at enemies. It's very fuel efficient too because this uses the same fuel as the flamethrower. It just uses it much better than the flamethrower. And this is another one of the weapons that is affected by the pyromaniac perk so you can get even more damage out of it which is really nice. Coming in our number five spot we have the combat shotgun. The combat shotgun by itself is one of the strongest weapons in Fallout 3 which is kind of crazy. This is mostly because of how shotguns work where they do really high damage initially as well as they usually have pretty high damage per second but if you start hitting crits with them they can hit crits on every pellet and the crits of every pellet is pretty much the same as a full damage shot if you hit all pellets normally which makes it so the damage damage per second just goes through the roof the combat shotgun is probably the best shotgun out of these because a sawed off shotgun can't hit crits which makes it not really that great and the full size double barrel although incredibly powerful you do only get one blast so if there's multiple enemies it's not going to be quite as strong where the combat shotgun does have multiple follow-up shots these weapons are really solid, and if you can get one early on, you can just run all the way through the game with the combat shotgun. These aren't even that rare. Raiders tend to carry them too, so once you start picking them up, you should be good to go for pretty much the entire game if you really want to. Coming into our number four spot, we have the Deathclaw Gauntlet. This is pretty much the best unarmed weapon in the game. This deals really high damage, really high damage per second. It is heavy for an unarmed weapon, but you won't need to be carrying around multiple of these if you don't want to. You could just to fix this up if you'd like. You can make this on a workbench. You can rush certain areas to get the schematic to make this as well. So making one of these isn't going to be that difficult early on. This thing also has a five times crit modifier on it, which makes it so it is the only unarmed or melee weapon that can guarantee crits if you're going with a crit build with high luck and something like ninja as well as finesse. That makes it so you can guarantee crits on every single hit. It's pretty crazy, but then it also has its own perk, or at least unarmed does, with Iron Fist, where you can get even more damage on all of the unarmed weapons. Making it so the Deathclaw Gauntlet is just an extremely solid weapon all the way around, and I think it's the best of the melee and unarmed weapons in the game. Coming in at number three, we have Vengeance. Vengeance is the unique Gatling laser that you find inside of the Deathclaw Sanctuary. This one does really high damage per second. It's got pretty good damage per shot. It is just all around stronger than a regular Gatling laser. It is in one of the more difficult areas to go in the game, but it's totally worth it. This one is incredible at pretty much any range. Most big weapons like this, like a minigun, are not very accurate at long range. The Gatling laser is still very accurate at long range. It deals really high damage per second. You've got a very large magazine. The only kind of downside to taking Vengeance or taking the Gatling Laser in general is that they are fairly rare to find, so it might be difficult to fix them up. That's not going to be that big of a deal if you go to the Alien DLC and you collect the Alien Epoxy because you could just fix it up that way. Or if you have somebody that you're willing to pay to fix this up too, it can be really strong, but that is also going to be pretty expensive. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the Terrible Shotgun. This is just a stronger version of the Combat Shotgun. So everything that I said about the Combat Shotgun also applies to this weapon. It has more damage, it has more damage per second. It does have worse spread than the regular combat shotgun, so at longer ranges it's not going to be as good, but at close range you're probably not going to notice any sort of difference. You can rush this one somewhat early on. The area that you got to go is kind of difficult because there is a lot of raiders there as well as there's a super mutant behemoth there, but if you can get inside and you can grab this off of the guy that has it, it is an incredibly powerful weapon that just deals so much damage and so much damage per second, and this is incredibly strong in any build, more so on a crit build where you can constantly be hitting crits and getting more damage per second and just getting these huge chunks of damage on enemies. The terrible shotgun is fantastic. It also can be repaired with just the regular combat shotguns, which are fairly common to find. And then at our number one spot, we have another shotgun. This is the Metal Blaster. This is the unique laser rifle that you get from the pit. In order to get this, you have to collect so many ingots. I believe this is 50 or 60 ingots in total. And this one is pretty crazy. This one doesn't do as much damage or damage per second as something like the terrible shotgun can do but it is far more consistent at longer ranges as well as it has a larger magazine and you can shoot this faster. So it can and usually does out damage per second pretty much everything in the game. Maybe besides something like the Fat Man if you drop that directly on something or the Experimental Merb if you've got really good spread and hit all of them. The Metal Blaster is just insane. It's got really good item health. It's got extremely long range for a shotgun. It's not as accurate as a laser rifle, but it's still very, very accurate by shotgun standards. This one also holds 24 rounds in it. It reloads very fast. It's pretty common to find laser rifles to fix this up with too, especially into the mid and late game of the regular story since the Enclave will likely be carrying those around. And this thing just absolutely shreds through anything. It's really weird that this is not the final reward that you get from a pit because this is by far the strongest weapon that you get of the rewards there. Even stronger than like the Perforator or the Mauler. This one just outshines basically everything. It is incredibly strong. And that'll do it for my top 10 best weapons in Fallout 3. There is a lot of really strong weapons in Fallout 3. A lot of shotgun weapons are really strong. 
Uh, I could have included more like Pulsons Revolver and like the Protectron's Gaze. Those are also really good, but I feel like we had enough shotguns on here. And I kind of wanted to highlight some of the other weapons like the bottle cap mines and whatnot. We will be doing bottom 10 worst weapons in Fallout 3 too. That one should be pretty fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.